Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of Psychonaut Sessions. You're home for all things psycho. This is your host, Danny Muller. Today, we're getting a little serious. So, word of warning, trigger warning for everyone and anybody who may be sensitive um, to um, just highly controversial subject matter. Um, uh, just this is definitely not for kids. Um, and just please know that this book contains a lot of very serious content. Um, and it's tackled very seriously. It's not tongue-in-cheek like some books that I've covered that are just kind of like make fun of violence and whatnot. This is a very um, uh, uh, serious, interesting, um, and very weighty uh, book. So I discovered this actually just in a um, comic spin. I've never known about it before. Um, it was in a comic spin in the flea market. Um, and... Uh, so it's made by Madison Clell. It's called Cuckoo. Um, again, I never really knew about this. Um, Green Door Studios is the stupid. I think it's just mostly Madison Clell herself. And really cool cover, like some Easter Island heads and everything, fully painted cover by Madison Clell. She did an entire series of books that are all about her struggles with multiple personality disorder. Um, I think uh, based upon the content of the book, they were the uh, condition came as a result of some serious trauma. Um, so again, huge, huge trigger warning for anyone. You know, I think it'll dig a little bit into that trauma. Um, but Madison Clell really got through it and made some uh, really cool books, kind of documenting her experience to help kind of give um, people an understanding of what it's like to live with multiple personality disorder. Um, I think a disassociative disorder um, is the proper term. So, but uh, she uses multiple personality. There's even a um, a, uh, a quote here, a blurb from Diana Schutz, um, who's a senior editor of Dark Horse Comics at the time. She's one of my favorite editors in comics, and says Cuckoo is fucking powerful, like a hammer blow to the head, and it is. This book, boom, um, hit me like a hammer over the head for sure. So let's dive into it. Um, she's got an introductory letter here. I'm just uh, from the outset. This is issue number 12. I don't have the other issues. I'm going to hunt the other issues down. Um, but uh, this is issue 12 and she's out of Portland, Oregon area. But her introductory letter here says from the outset, I won. Therapy is finally finally finished. It took eight years and countless daughters, but I, dollars, but I'm now officially quote unquote normal. This feat would never have been possible without the following individuals and the, she thinks a bunch of people. And then here, and god damn, I love this. She says, fuck you, each and every psychopathic bastard who crossed my path and thought that terrorizing me would be fun. I survived in spite of you, despite you, and just despite you. So boom. Um you can go to cuckoocomic.com, uh, find resources, interviews, articles um, and I think that there is a collected edition of all the issues, which I'm, you know, I, I'm willing to pick up whatever um, of this. I want to read more. But it was even just this small snippet of what I read out of this comic was enough for me to just like, whew, I needed a break. So buckle in if you um, don't want anything weighty to influence your day. Watch no further. So immediately we get an incredible image here. Um, of a gal looking in her journal and so there's just all of these different voices uh, speaking um, through here I am not a multiple sure there's a little kid in my head who pops out and speaks to me in the third person but I am not a multiple I've been losing chunks of time and prone to traumatic flashbacks but I am not a multiple I can't sleep for the nightmares but I am not a multiple so on and so forth my boyfriend Jacob is convinced I have split personality but I'm not a multiple so this is kind of like our story so far, just kind of explaining where this has been. She's obviously been through therapy. She has a boyfriend. Um, she's been dealing with this. Um, so just an incredible, this is a striking image. It's just a person looking at a book, but I mean, look at those eyes and just the brushwork is amazing. So we get a little bit inside of this journal. No, 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 no. Um, and all these different kind of voices and different penmanship in this journal and we get this gal sitting here um, with her book on the bench 
Um, so we just get this experience of her um, with a freak sign over her head, walking, um, being out in public, trying to act normal, trying to be normal, but just obviously there's this stigma of her condition. I was screwed in the blink of an eye. I had crossed that line, which divides us versus them. You know them, the crazy ones, the kind of people you only see on TV shows, multiples freaks, act normal equals be normal. Thank God for denial. She goes through then be no this whole panel is surrounded by be normal, act normal, be normal, act normal, be normal, act normal, be normal, act normal. She's just trying to move through her day. She runs into something here. Hello, Madison, hang on. Almost get ready. I'm almost ready to go. Hey, is something wrong? Or besides the usual? So that's her boyfriend. And she's kind of considering what to do and shows him the journal. And he's like, ah. I told no one what happened. Yep, no one. If Jacob found out how loony his girlfriend really was, he'd bolt for sure. Well, wouldn't he? So it's interesting. She's got this um, sequence of stuff going um, on one side. And then she's got this bleed section over here. Um, of other thoughts, giving kind of context to what's going on. Why, no, no, nothing's wrong whatsoever. Why do you ask? He is never fooled. Great, I finally have a cool boyfriend, but it turns out I am a lunatic. She's got that little, it's hard to see, but got that little freak sign above her head as she's sitting there crouched. He's looking through the book. Okay, I'm done. Let's go home. And so she is trying to get up. She's got this like freak sign still on her and walking along. Madison, are you coming? The car's unlocked. She's down on the ground. Gods, this thing weighs a billion pounds. So she's, you know, dealing with the weight of her particular condition. They're sitting here soon. There's all these words that just say small talk, small talk, small talk. So this is just all stuff that just goes through her head. You know, even if it doesn't solve anything, talking about what's on my mind usually makes me feel better. You know what I mean? And that's him saying that. And she's like, oh, yes, absolutely, I agree. And she obviously does not. And then we get this astounding spread in her mind. Just don't really know what to say. Just contains the struggle, the conflict going on within her own mind, pulling between you know these different dichotomies and between a normal life and this life and all the different split items in her brain. It's just and amazing. And she sits there in bed. Just obviously this is um, very difficult. Wide-eyed. So later they're in a car. Stop by after your session. We can go grab some coffee. Okie doke. So she's going to a therapy session. So she's sitting there in therapy. And their therapist is like, So what's that you've got there? My new therapist was also designated to remain in the dark. I didn't want her to think I was weird. And asterisk saying down here actual reasoning what's this and she just starts saying with her book in her hand so she just doesn't know what to say and then here and shows it off and the therapist looks at it hmm I blame fatigue for blowing my cover so she's always trying to be normal even in front of her therapist like you gotta act normal gotta be normal any of those voices are welcome to speak to me. That seven-year-old, perhaps, she seems quite active, the therapist says. Er, no, and now the seven-year-old is sitting right next to her. She won't come out here. Oh, well, who cares what one shrink thinks? Besides, the owners of those various scripts would never merge in that office. I was the one in control. Well, maybe next week, then. See you next Thursday. So her therapist just has this, like, bag or box over her head. <sighs> So this is all this, like, kind of from her perspective here. Just how the world kind of seems to her. Funny, the harder I ignored the little girl, the more lightheaded I felt. Hey, can I come in, you know? 
Ooh, we could go out. This is her boyfriend saying this, and the little girl's right there. And the little girl takes over her. Yeah! And the guy's walking off. Hey! He's not literally walking off with the little girl. He's walking off with the little girl that's inside of her. So he's walking off with her, and she's trying to keep up. Hey! As they walk off together. And you were listening to the entire point. That big girl wouldn't let me out. Wait, I thought big girl Madison couldn't control your comings and goings and so the girl's talking to the boyfriend and she's like she wouldn't let me out and she can't sort of if she's really mean she pretends I'm not real and he's like well that doesn't sound very fair Madison should be nicer to you so Madison sitting there like once again I find myself eavesdropping on this conversation <laughs> with this inner child or hallucination or a subconscious cruel joke a total farce, something that's not real, talking to my boyfriend. He's like, tell you what, if I sense you need to talk, I'll ask you by name. What can I call you? Oh, great. Well, I have no name. June. You can call me June. She's like, oh, crap. So that's to be continued. Um, so a little bit of anthology here. Um, this uh, couple of little like snippets here. This one um, cartoon is called Peeves and Phenomenon. Um, so today's lesson plan, turning lemons into lemonade, how to turn your goddamn traumatic history into something useful for once. So she obviously had, you know, a, a, a traumatic event that led to the multiple personality disorder. She's had a lot of therapy. So this is kind of like her little play on some of the therapeutic steps that she's taken in kind of a funny way. One, how to, so how to turn your goddamn traumatic history into something useful for once. One, become familiar enough with your history that the mere mention of the past does not in, induce raging panic attacks. Um, it's not uncommon for this phase to take er, many years and tens of thousands of dollars. Don't skip this step. 2. Pick a phobia and or a stressful situation. Look, a spider. 3. Compare chosen phobia and or situation to your worst traumatic memory. Well, um, compared to being gang raped at age 7, this little bug crawling on the floor is no problem. See? Phew! Piece of cake. It's on your foot. And she falls over. Voila! Compared to your past experiences, your current phobia and or situation is but a trifle. Graduate level. Practice, practice, practice. A world of opportunity awaits your newfound calming perspective. From kung fu fighting. Dude, no, no, no. It's walk in the park. Tra la la. To business safus. The 200 plus book shipment arrived. Only a scrap. Only as a scrap of cardboard with your turn address. I practice this one daily. Eerie calm during bad blind dates. Uh, what is that? Mm, she's sitting here in this boring blind date. To pain management. Feel some pain, okay? The bottom of the foot is a very sensitive area, so these shots are going to hurt. But only briefly. Just want to warn you, so don't be surprised. Okay, try to get deep breath in. Burr. Works great with root canals, it says. And then here... The applications are endless. It's a spider in this spider web. And it says right here, fuck the fear. You know, the camera's getting it. Um, so in the next um, stories from the following may trigger some readers and definitely it's very triggering. Um, it's a sequence of splash pages of her going through her trauma and reliving some of her trauma of being abused. And it's it's all kind of like from within her perspective and within her eyes. And it's, I'm going to flip through it because it's just, it's horrible. Um, and she's dropping a coffee cup um, and reliving that. Um, and talked about, you know, missing children and what happens to them and how... Some newspapers say they died peacefully, and just how ridiculous that is. Just heart-wrenching, heart-wrenching. Um, this whole comic was a punch to the gut, um, but it's meant to be, and it definitely achieved its purpose. Go out there and buy some cuckoo, ladies and gentlemen, and support um, Madison Clell. Um, it's definitely important to me because I know there's a stigma about people with multiple personality disorders or other mental disorders. I know some people personally um, that have some of these conditions, and it doesn't mean that they're just 
off the wall, crazy, psychotic, or dangerous, or whatnot. They just have a condition that they're living with. Um, and it's really important to have a context and understanding for that. This is one of those cases um, where comics are a very meaningful medium that can help transmit information in a way that really no other medium can. Um, not meant to be an entertaining factor, um, but definitely can show, you know, with visuals and text overlaid, um, whole new levels and layers of emotion that you can't get from just regular books or from film at the same time. So this is one of those reasons why I love comics. Check it out. Cuckoo by Madison Clell, Green Door Studios. There's individual comics out there as well as a graphic novel. Go support her and everyone out there in a good way, in a safe way, in a loving way. Keep it psycho.